Good evening, Bulldog fans. Welcome to the Mule Barn for the 2024 Black Diamond Conference Championship game. Cole Carter alongside Travis Black, Joby Wagner back at the WRUL studio. Landon Elliott and Chloe Beach with us for those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. The pregame show is brought to you by Rice Motors. Take RiceMotors.com for a test drive now and give Rice a try before you buy. You'll be glad you did. Carmine White County at 22-7 on the season, 8-1 in the Black Diamond Conference. Fairfield 19-11 and also 8-1 in the conference. Travis, third times these two teams have faced off this season, and without a question, Carmi, the first two games, they let slip. Yeah, they had a 15-point lead in, one, in the first game and then a 10-point lead in the second game into the second half. And this Fairfield team's not, not a team you can play around with, so when you get a lead, you're going to have to put put the, put the boot to their throat and you know stomp them out before they get back up and make a comeback. And Carmi's failed to do so, be able to close out those two games. Both teams suffered losses back on Tuesday. The Bulldogs lost. Uh, pretty much an embarrassing one up in Lawrenceville, but then Fairfield, they lost at Flora on Tuesday, which was their first conference loss, which set up this game tonight, which means winner takes all at the Black Diamond Conference. We thought if Fairfield won out, uh, Carmike could play for a tie tonight, but now it really amps up what the meaning behind this game is, Travis. You win this game, and you win the Black Diamond Conference East. Yeah, it's a big game atmosphere. It's Fairfield senior night, and you can just feel the energy in this building right now, and it's big for both teams. For Fairfield, it's a chance at a conference title, and it's their senior night. And for Carmack, it's a ch uh, chance to repeat as conference champions. Well, I haven't seen this place this packed in a long time, back to when we were in high school, as Carmack brought a lot of fans. Fairfield, of course, as you said, their senior night. Uh, and, and with that being said, Travis, if you're Carmack, you've got to come out on a good start because if you fall down behind early, let this crowd get behind them, let this band get behind them, uh, Carmine's going to be in trouble early. Yeah, Carmine's going to have to come out with a good start. They can't they can't come out and you know kind of sleepwalk their way through the first quarter. They're going to have to come out ready to play because this Fairfield Mules team is, you can just feel the energy. They can just see it in how they're warming up. They're ready to go. Momentum, momentum's a big thing, obviously, from the start. Uh, Fairfield gets the momentum. They can keep it. But I think if you are Carmine, if you do fall down early, if you do fall down at some point in this game, you got to find a way to make some shots. And as Kevin Wolf says, create your own juice. Bulldogs need that tonight. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have to at times take the air out of the basketball, not let this Fairfield Mules team get going and get running. And you're gonna, they're gonna have to be able to you know run their offense, take care of the basketball, and then convert when they have their opportunities at the rim or at the three point line. You mentioned take care of the basketball. The first time these two teams played the Friday before the CIT started, Carmine had that 16 point lead. Turned the ball over numerous times in the second half, especially late in the fourth quarter. We've seen Fairfield, when they need to, they can go to that full court pressure. And the first time around, Carmi struggled mightily against it. Yeah, that's been Carmi's bugaboo all, all season long, is that full court pressure. Some games they handle it very well, and other games they don't. And when this Fairfield Mules team is getting up in full court pressure, they play nine, ten guys deep. So they have fresh legs at all times, and it makes it very difficult for a team like Carmi that maybe goes six or seven deep on a, on the, on a good night. But Carmine's going to have to take care of the basketball, limit Fairfield's extra chance opportunities. Looking back at Tuesday's loss, Carmine just, they didn't shoot the ball very well, but didn't shoot very good shots. It was a lot of passing around, shooting deep threes. Carmine's got to find a way to get the ball inside, move it around, and get better shots tonight. Yeah, Carmine's going to have to work inside and out. The ball touches the paint, and then it gets kicked out for a three. That's a good shot. Carmine sometimes gets the settling for the, you know, the three or four passes around the three-point line, just replacing each other, not really setting any screens, and then launching up a contested three. And sometimes when you're hitting, that's a good – it's never really a good shot, but if you're making it, well, what can you say? But when you're not, you're going to have to find something else that's going to get you going. And, you know, getting the ball inside, getting a paint touch here, layup there, and then it opens up that three-point game, which Carmi loves. Fairfield's got some size. We're going to see a, a couple guys off the bench that uh, played a big part in both of their two wins against Carmi earlier in this season. And uh, with that being the case, Carmine's got to make sure they box out. That's been a problem the last couple of games, allowing offensive rebounds. In a game like this where every possession matters, you can't give this team second chances. Yeah, that goes for turnovers. That goes for offensive rebounds. Carmine's going to have to limit Fairfield's uh, uh, chances and extra opportunities. So they're going to have to box out, rebound well. And we've already talked about how they're going to need to take care of the basketball. This Fairfield Mules team will... 
uh, get going, and it's like a snowball effect. It's going to get rolling downhill, and you can't stop them once they do. It's the final game of the regular season. Bulldogs will begin regional play on Monday. They will host El Dorado if they win that game. They will then travel to Massac County on Wednesday to take on Vienna in the regional semifinals. A win there would put Carmine in the regional championship next Friday down in Metropolis, Massac County. The Lady Bulldogs had their season come to an end back on Thursday in the regional championship here in Fairfield. They lost to Robinson 39 to 31. So congrats to Clinton Wolf and the Lady Bulldogs on a fantastic season. They finished the year 26 and six and fall just shy of a regional championship. One of the best seasons in girls basketball history here in Carmine. So congrats to Coach Wolf and the Lady Bulldogs on a great season there. Bulldogs on the boys basketball side trying to add a trophy to that trophy case, trying to go back to back in the BDC for the first time in probably quite some time. I forgot to check before we got here tonight, but uh, a lot on the line, all the marbles and, and Travis, it all comes down. I really think in this first this first quarter is going to tell you how this game's going to go. Yeah, if Carmi comes out ready to play and matches Fairfield's energy, it's going to be a nice, tightly contested ball game. If they don't, I'm afraid this Fairfield Mules team will run all over them. It's hard to beat a team three times. We'll see how tough it is for the Fairfield Mules trying to beat Carmi for the third time. Maybe the first time that happened in a couple of years. Flag is being lowered at midcourt. That means it is time for the national anthem. We'll step aside for a three-minute break come back with the starters in the opening tip between Carmi White County and Fairfield. It's the Black Diamond Conference East Championship game, and it's coming up next on 97.3 WRUL. Your partner in auto repair. That's Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. You get service, expertise, and I promise you'll drive away satisfied. Complete engine and body repair, 24-hour day wrecker and towing service, tires from sales and service, and repair including muffler service, brakes, shocks, suspension, and more. When quality counts, count on Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. Your partner in auto repair. Call 382-7165 today. Citizens National Bank of Albion has always been in the business of making dreams come true. Are you like many in the community that have dreamed of owning your own business? Bring your ideas in and speak to one of our commercial loan professionals in Albion, Olney, Crossville, and Bridgeport. Our competitive rates and solid decision making will make it the best decision you ever made. Let us help you get started and we'll watch your business grow. Citizens National Bank of Albion, no better banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. I'm Nancy J. Winter CPA. We believe in family values, even in the world of finance, because every financial decision impacts your family. For all the milestones in your life, our team is here to maximize your savings, minimize your taxes, and help you plan for a prosperous future. Visit Nancy J. Winter CPA in Carmi for tax planning, saving for college, retirement planning, and the expertise to help get you where you want to be. Learn more at nancyjwinnercpa.com or call 382-2364. Nancy J. Winter CPA, where you are treated like family. Great teamwork is no accident. David and the gang at Hale Body Shop salute the area athletes. Just as in sports, the team at Hale Body Shop work together to make sure you get your car back as quickly as possible. When it comes to collision repair, more and more people choose the team way out there on Possum Road. Hale Body Shop in Karma. David and the gang are proud supporters of area athletes. Roark Trucking and Roark Transport in Carmi. Driving the distance, delivering the difference. Commercial or residential. Anhydrous propane and fuel. Rock, dirt, and lime. Parking lots, driveways, and washouts. Farmers depend on Roark Trucking and Roark Transport to deliver their lime when and where they need it. Remember Roark Trucking and Roark Transport for your next job or your next haul. Fast and dependable. Call Roark Transport and Roark Trucking. 618-265-3665. Welcome back to the Mule Barn, getting set for the opening tip between the Bulldogs and the Mules. And this is the Black Diamond Conference East Championship game. Winner takes it all in the BDC East. Starting fine for Kevin Wolf and the Bulldogs. Going to go with number two, Gavin Holloman. As well as number five, Mitchell Edwards. Number 14, Landon Driscoll. Number 20, Kate Stockton. And 21, Trey Dixon. Tolleman, Edwards, Driscoll, Stockton, and Dixon for 
the 22 and seven Carmine White County Bulldogs trying to win their second consecutive BDC East title. Great job by the Fairfield Band with the National Anthem, one of the best anthems I've heard performed by a high school band. Also, real quick before we meet the Fairfield starters, do want to mention uh, those of you that have not been in the loop over the last 48 hours uh, on Nelson Ryder wrestling up in Champaign at the RHSA 1A state finals. Nelson went one and two up there, so he did not place, unfortunately, but wraps up an incredible wrestling career for Nelson. Just got a text from uh, from Coach Golson. He had 41 wins this season. That is a school record. So Nelson Ryder, 41 wins this season in a senior campaign, a state appearance. Wraps up one of the best wrestling careers, if not the best, in CWC history. Great crowd on hand as they get set to introduce the Fairfield starting five. Scott McAravey starting five of his seven seniors tonight. He's going to go with number two, Jay Snyder. Snyder is listed at 5'11". Also number three, Trent Bliss. He's listed at 6'4". Also going to start number 24. That's Landon Harrelson, 6'1", senior. Number 25, Lane Tucker. Listed at 6'3". And also number 11, Crescent White, a 6'0", senior. That's Snyder, Bliss, White, Harrelson, and Tucker for Scott McElravey in the 19 and 11. Fairfield Mules, they had a pretty dominant run about five years ago. They won, I believe it was three straight BDC titles. Last year, kind of a rebuild year, but you know, they've definitely exceeded expectations this year, I thought, coming into the season. They lost their 1,000-point score, do-it-all guy last year, and uh, Eric Rogers thought they would take a step back. It's been the exact opposite. Well, they took a step forward, and sometimes losing that type of player makes other people step up, and they've had a few people step up, and especially some of these freshmen that are getting to play, like your Mainers, like your uh, Groon. And, you know, they, Harrelson and Tucker are two fabulous players, and they will be missed next year. But right now they are enjoying the fruits of their labor. Well, and they've got a good senior class. Again, seven seniors for Fairfield. They're going to be good for a couple years. They've got a really good freshman group. Dag's only a junior. Easton's only a junior. Those two will come off the bench tonight. Easton and Mitchell at midcourt. Bulldogs in the road. Maroons, Fairfield of their home whites, and the Bulldogs win the tip. Great crowd on both sides here in the Black Diamond Conference Championship game. Winner wins the East. Trey Dixon over on the far side. Kate Stockton with it. Driscoll here on the near top. He dribbles left. Gets it off in the hands of Gavin Holloman. Now on the far side, here's Edwards. Edwards drives to the basket, right to the rim. Missed the dunk to start the ball game, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, I saw that runway <laughs> that opened up and would have been a great way to start the ball game if you're Carmine, but a little too hard. So Fairfield gets the possession. We've played 30 seconds here in the first quarter. Harrelson across the timeline, goes to the left side of the hands of Tucker. Tucker right to the rim. He will draw the foul. That will be on Trey Dixon. So both teams. They like to shoot the three-point shot. Both going towards the basket in their first two offensive trips. First free throw for Tucker on the way. Good. Tucker did not play in the first matchup between these two teams, dealing with a concussion back in January. Played the second time around. And, of course, playing tonight, he goes two for two, and Fairfield leads 2-0 with 7.20 to play here in the first quarter. Some light full-court pressure by the Mules, but Carmine breaks it. And that pass tipped away by Bliss into the backcourt. Dixon goes to get it. He lobs it up ahead to Driscoll now. Carmine's got numbers, but they reset the offense as Driscoll gets to the rim, and he lays it up and in. Ooh, a trick shot there from Landon Driscoll. Yeah, great, great drive right there, taking it right into the heart of the paint, and... Tough finish. Maybe took three steps yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I was. I'm not judging. We're tied at two, 6.48 left to play here in the first quarter. Harrelson working as the point guard here early on. Open mid-range jumper for Tucker won't go, and Cade Stockton grabs the rebound. 
Bulldogs pushing the floor, and a nice play by Harrelson to steal that pass. They had Edwards up ahead, and Harrelson looked like Troy Palamalu over the middle to pick that pass off. 2-2 game. 6.25 left to play here in the first quarter. Tucker picks up his dribble, lobs it near side to Jay Schneider. Pulling up for three here in the near corner is Tucker. It won't go, and Stockton grabs the rebound, and he's fouled. Miscounted eight seniors on this Fairfield squad, one of those being Latrell Snyder. He, brother of Jay Snyder, son of the volleyball coach Chet Snyder. Latrell got injured at the end of football season, so he has not been able to play this year for the Mules. But eight seniors on the roster this year for Scott McElravey. 2-2 ball game. We've played two minutes here in the first quarter. Driscoll dribbling off to his right. Gets the ball in the hands of Edwards. Thought about the deep three. Now drives inside. Lost it. Poked away by Bliss and stolen by Harrelson. Harrelson brings it into the front court. Here on the near side, it's Tucker. Back to Harrelson. Left side, it goes to Snyder. Snyder thought about the three, then gets it off to Harrelson between the circles. Back to Snyder. He dribbles it. It's in the hands of Crescent White on the left top. White with a baseline drive, cut off by Stockton. Now it's Bliss at the top of the key. Dribbling it near side now in the hands of Harrelson. Wanted to pull up for three. Good recovery there by Edwards. This is what you're going to see tonight. As Tucker pulls up for a left wing three, it won't go. And it's rebounded by Gavin Holloman. Slow, patient, defensive ball game is what we're going to see tonight, Travis. A lot of methodical offensive possessions. Driscoll over to the right side of the hands of Gavin Holloman. Jabbing a drive from Gavin here on the near side to Edwards. Edwards got stripped on his way up, and yeah, I thought they were going to call a foul, and they do. Mitchell bounced around like a pinball down to the paint. Foul beyond the floor, so no free throws. That one's going to go against Lane Tucker. That's his first. Second mule foul. And so Driscoll will inbound. 5.04 left to play here in the first quarter. It's a 2-2 ball game. Driscoll looks, looks, lobs it on the far top to Stockton, and Cade couldn't corral it. Another Carmi turnover, another avoided turnover, really. Two-two score, five minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Harrelson over on the far top, dribbles it near side, gets it off. This is Tucker on the right elbow. Tucker working against Edwards, steps through. Nice move. Tucker lays it in. He's taking all the Fairfield shots, yeah. and he's got all four. And he is their number one scoring option, him and Harrelson. And right now, without really any point guard, both of them are handling the ball. Yeah, they made a good point. You know, Easton and Dag, the two juniors, sitting out in the lineups with the senior night. Those are the two guys that take it up the floor. So it's been Harrelson. And Tucker running the point. Here's a nice drive by Driscoll. He gets inside, and they're going to call a foul. I believe that was on either Bliss or White. And that will be on Trent Bliss. That is his first foul, third Fairfield foul. And that will send Landon Driscoll to the free throw line, where he is shooting 78% this season. First free throw on the way for Driscoll. Comes out. He's, of course, brought to you by Expressway Ford. Don't get fouled by a bad buying experience. Count on Expressway Ford Mercury. You'll always be in the bonus. Driscoll will have one more. Last week, Lennon signed his letter of intent to play college basketball at Blackburn College up in Carlinville. Second free throw on the way. Makes it a 4-3 ball game. Driscoll has all three. 4.20 left to play here in the first quarter. Dag brings it into the front court as him and Easton checked in during that dead ball during the free throws. Gets it off to Harrelson here going to his left. Now back to his right. They get it to Easton here in the near corner. Easton dribbling off to his left. Gets it off to Tucker. Now left side in the hands of Harrelson. Harrelson dribbling picks up his dribble. They go in the post to Harrelson. He spins left. Gets away from Driscoll. Shot missed. Rebounded by Driscoll. And in the front court, it goes to Holloman. Holloman to the basket. Holloman lays it up and in. Great transition right there. Great transition offense. That's what Carmine's kind of failed to do this year against teams that press. And he made a good point 
earlier this week, Travis. You break the press and you slow it down, but you really want to try to make teams pay for pressing it and try to score in the fast break, which Carmi did there. Yeah, great right there. Three on two back, and Gavin takes it straight to the basket. Here's a drive by Dag to the rim. Floater up. Can't bank it in. Rebounded by Holloman. Bulldogs playing some really good defense here in the first quarter. Edwards over on the right side to Holloman. Gavin gets inside. Up and under. Shot no good, but he draws a foul. Good to see Gavin going towards the basket. You know, he didn't score back on Tuesday. But I don't think he stepped into the three-point line all night with that zone defense Lawrenceville was running. Carmi couldn't get any looks to the basket. And Gavin's done well in the last few games of doing that. Yeah, he's done a good job in the second half of the season being aggressive going towards the basket. But on Tuesday night, settled for a lot of long-range jumpers. And he's, he can hit them with the best of them. But he was cold that night. And I'm glad to see he's getting things going to the hoop today. Second free throw for Holloman. He goes 0 for 2. Those two brought to you by Expressway Ford as Fairfield brings it the other way. Carmine leads 5 to 4. Three minutes left to play. Here in the first quarter, Jalen Maynard's checked in during that dead ball for the Mules. They're a deep team. They go about 10-11 deep, night in, night out. Dag picks up his dribble, gets it off to Tucker at the top of the key. Tucker on the near side, Easton with a shot fake and a drive against Stockton. Goes all the way to the baseline. Now it's in the far corner off to Harrelson, and he'll pull it out to midcourt. 2.40 left to play here in... Quarter number one, five to four, Carmichael White County in this Black Diamond Conference East winner take all. And Fairfield just dribbling the ball out. In the far corner, it's off to Tucker. Tucker guarded by Driscoll. Interesting matchup. Kevin Wolf usually puts Driscoll on their best player. He's on Tucker tonight. And Tucker's been the one shooting all their shots. Easton. Driving against Edwards, dumps it off to Dag. Dag spins, layup short, rebound, out of bounds. Last touch by Fairfield. That's a great possession defensively there for Carmine. Yeah, made him back it up, slow things down, and then force him into a tough contested layup. 2.05 left to play here in the first. 5-4, to four, Carmine. Fairfield hasn't waited any, any time. That's a, yeah, a five-second call. Here I mentioned Fairfield, they, they put the pressure on since the start. You know, in pass, they've waited until the third quarter, fourth quarter to start pressing. Jump in the gate here on senior night. And a five-second violation call there against Mitchell Edwards. Harrelson left top for the lead for three. It's no good. And Holloman able to grab the rebound. Fairfield not shooting the ball very well here in the first quarter. Really, neither team is. As the Bulldogs lead five to four, we are under two minutes left to play here in the first. Holloman over on the far side. He drives to the basket, puts up a tough shot, and gets it to go. Great finish there by Gavin. 7-4, Carmichael White County, 135 to play here in the first quarter. Harrelson left top, guarded by Dixon. Goes on the near side to Dag. Dag in the near corner goes to Tucker. Tucker back to Dag. And he'll get the call from Scott McElravey. Dag dribbling to his left. Now it's Easton trying to drive against Stockton. Easton goes back to the rim, stops. His shot rejected by Edwards, and it goes up onto the stage. And Trent Bliss will check back in for the Mules. 1-11 left to play here in the first. 7-4, Carmichael White County with the lead. Dag to inbound, slaps the basketball. Looks. Gets it into Bliss, back to Dag. Thought about the three. And he'll pull it back out. Would not be shocked to see Fairfield hold the ball for the final minute here in this first quarter. Bliss between the circles. They want to go to Manders in the post, who's got Holloman guarding him. Now him and Edwards switch as they go here on the near side to Easton with 50 seconds left. Easton a drive in the near corner, guarded by Dixon. Back left side. You hear the Carmine Faithful making some noise. Bulldogs have played some very good defense here in this first quarter. Dag dribbles in the near corner, getting a screen from Mainers. Dag stops, try to dump it off to Mainers. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fairfield. Another long defensive possession, and Carmike gets a stop. And now they're going to have to handle, handle this pressure real quick. And Well, you see Mitchell Edwards saying, I am not throwing <laughs> the ball in. Well, normally you want your biggest receiver on the outside True. for... The situation. Dixon gets it into Edwards. We've seen Edwards 
take on more of a ball handling role as this season has gone on. The Bulldogs have it with 23 seconds left to play here in the first quarter, and they'll try to hold for one shot, leading 7-4. Holloman over on the right side, gets it off to Edwards. Now it's Driscoll between the circles. Near side, Dixon with eight seconds. Gets it off to Holloman. Gavin spins in the lane, shot blocked by Tucker, rebounded by Dag. Dag with two seconds, Dag at the buzzer. Almost bounced in. Well, a couple of things happened there. I thought Tucker fouled Holloman. I thought Dag was out of bounds when he got the rebound. None of that matters. Carmine leads 7-4 to four as we go to the second quarter. Back in one minute. In 1925, when Farrell Hospital opened, they knew that families in El Dorado and the surrounding communities needed a hospital they could depend on, close to home. Over the years, Farrell grew to meet the needs of patients. Today, Farrell Hospital has grown to offer advanced emergency care, orthopedics, cancer, surgery, imaging, lab, and more, always keeping more care right here close to home. Farrell Hospital. You can depend on us. You can buy more of what you want when you save on what you need. Save on meal ingredients by shopping Little Giant Grocery Outlet in Carmi. Little Giant's team of buyers are constantly scanning wholesalers, looking for pantry favorites and meal ingredients at astonishing savings just so you can shop confidently, knowing that you can come in anytime and find great deals from fresh cuts of meat and grocery items to deli, fresh produce and frozen goods. See just how much more your dollar buys at Little Giant Grocery, Carmi, Illinois. Start of the second quarter, Carmichael White County leading Fairfield 7-4. As the Mules have the basketball, they go down to the post to Jalen Maynard, the freshman working on Edwards. Tries to get position, threw it up and it went in. Oh, that's a tough shot right there. Mitchell played that as good as he could. But Maynard's using his long arms to get that shot to go in. And it's down to a one-point game, 7-6. We've played 30 seconds here in the second quarter. They go in the post to Edwards. Edwards with four defenders on him. Got the shot off but couldn't get it to go in. And the ball goes out of bounds. They say last touch by Carmichael White County. Seven twenty-seven left to play here in the second quarter. Winner takes the Black Diamond Conference East. Goreville and Vienna shared on the west side. We'll have an outright winner this year on the east. Driving in is Snyder. In the far corner goes to Dag. Dag with a shot, faking a dribble, now picked up by Dixon. And he'll pull it back out towards the Mills logo. Dag near side, he gets to Harrelson. Harrelson dribbling to his left, shot fake, goes left side to Snyder. Deep three on the way, it won't go. Rebounded by Cade Stockton. Fairfield 0 of 5 from beyond the arc. Here in this first half. Driscoll dribbling to his right, guarded by Harrelson, stops, steps through. Nice move by Landon Driscoll, getting fancy with it. That's his second tough finish there in the lane. And nice footwork by him as well in the post. Not a lot of guards are able to do that down low against the trees. 9-6 Bulldogs, 6-20 left to play here in the second quarter. Snyder gets it off to Harrelson between the circles down the near side. It goes to Mainers. Mainers, back left side, it goes to Snyder in the far corner, it's Harrelson. Harrelson dribbling, guarded by Driscoll, gets it near side to Easton. Now in the near corner, it's Dag. Dag with a dribble, pulls it back, guarded by Holloman. Six minutes left to play here in the second quarter, Bulldogs up nine to six. See Holloman face guarding Dag, doing a great job. Now they're face guarding Easton and Dag able to get free. Really been impressed with the way Carmichael's played defense here in this first half. Yeah, they brought it on that end of the floor. Harrelson in the near corner. Schneider left open. Missed that three and rebounded by Holloman. I was going to say go figure. We start talking about the defense and Schneider hits an open three, but Fairfield now 0 for 6 from beyond the arc. Holloman driving inside. Dumps it off to Stockton. Cade couldn't corral it. And we're going to get a foul called against Jay Schneider. And Snyder will come out of the ball game. White and Tucker back in for the Mules. 
his first team play. 520 left to play here in the second, 9 to 6. Bulldogs in front. Driscoll lobs it up top to Edwards. Long three on the way. Short. Rebound tipped. Goes all the way to midcourt. Edwards able to get it. Second chance here for the Bulldogs. Shoot long shot to get long rebounds. Edwards picks up his dribble. Lobs it up top to Holloman. Holloman. Hands it off to Edwards on the far right side. Edwards driving in, near side. Dixon, oh, he's wide open. <laughs> Fans wanted him to shoot it, but Trey didn't even think about it. Holloman gets it off to Driscoll now, driving in. Driscoll, that's Carmi playing the patient card here on this possession. And that's good. You don't want to rush a shot. If it's not there, don't force it. Holloman over on the far side, trying to get past Harrelson. Ball poked away by White. It will go out of bounds, and it will stay with the Bulldogs. This is how these games go with these two teams, especially over the last couple of years. It's, you know, slow basketball. Yeah. First to 40 wins. First to 40. Both teams playing uh, great defense right now, so I expect it to continue this way. Edwards dribbling right, gets it off to Holloman. He'll fire a long three. First bank three, Gavin Holloman. First three-point make for either team this night, and that was a long one. Bulldogs 12, Mules 6, 4.18 to play here in the second. That's $3 from first bank to the Carmel White County Unit 5 School District. Crescent White with a nice move inside, lays it up and in. Mules back to the full court man pressure, but Bulldogs try to clear out as Holloman gets it across the timeline, and he's fouled by White. That's the second Fairfield foul here in the second quarter. That's White second. Jay Snyder, the Jay Snyder checks back in for the Mules. White will check out with that being his second foul. 12 to 8 Bulldogs. Four minutes left to play here in the second quarter. Driscoll to inbound. Gets into the backcourt to Edwards and he'll walk it across the timeline. Dixon here near side. Over on the right top to Driscoll. Drive to the basket. Driscoll got a shot blocked, but there's Kate Stockton doing Kate Stockton things. The rebound and the putback. Timeout Fairfield has the Bulldogs lead 14 to 8. We'll step aside for a 30-second break. It's brought to you by Rush Appliance on 97.3 WRUL. What you need, when you need it. Wabash Christian Therapy on Oak Street in Carmi has what you need. From outpatient therapy serving pediatrics to geriatrics, when you need it. Flexible hours for your convenience, state-of-the-art equipment, private treatment rooms, and personalized programs tailored to fit you and delivered by a therapy team committed to compassionate care. Wabash Christian Therapy on Oak Street in Carmi. Learn more by calling 382-2927 today or search Wabash Christian Therapy on Facebook. Wabash Christian Therapy in Carmi. Better every day. Bulldogs lead Fairfield 14 8. Did you hear that, Travis? Everything at the concession stand is $1. Well, I just paid $2 for my Diet Pepsi, <laughs> so they're lying already. <laughs> Fairfield's got the ball after a Scott McElravey timeout that was brought to you by Rush Appliance. If it's time to rethink your furniture and appliances, Time to thank Rush Appliance in Carmi or in Fairfield. Jay Snyder open three won't go. And the long rebound gets out to Lane Tucker. Harrelson now between the circles. You could call this the Rush Appliance rivalry. Uh-huh, like that one, Travis? Yep. <laughs> Whatever works. Easton dribbles off to his left. Get it because there's one in Fairfield and one in Carmi. I, I, okay. I understand, I understand. Thank you. 309 to play here in the second. Harrelson off to Bliss, down at the top of the key, dribbling near side. Trying to get it off to Tucker, but Driscoll denying. And now Tucker dribbles. Stops in the lane, fades away. Air ball will call to pass to Harrelson as he gets out to Snyder now on the right side. Snyder to the rim, his shot no good. And Edwards uses his long arms to get the rebound, and he draws a foul. Another long defensive possession, and the Bulldogs get the stop. And they're playing with great energy on the defensive end, and they're doing it for a minute, minute and a half at a time. That's Jay Snyder's third foul. So he checks out. 
Maynard's back in. I mean, it seems like every dead ball, Fairfield's got more guys to put in. As they go back to their full court pressure, Dixon gets it into Edwards. And Mitchell will just hand it off to Holloman. They'll break it with ease. Holloman over on the right side to Driscoll. Driscoll looking. Now it's Stockton. Near side it goes to Holloman. Holloman, they get it to Edwards. Thought about the long three. Now dribbles to his right. Picks up his dribble. Maynard is all over him. Gets it off to Holloman now near midcourt with 2.25 left to play in the second quarter. Holloman, nice dump off pass to Cage Stockton for two. Great play there by Gavin, keeping his head up on the dribble, drawing the defense and dropping it off to Cade. Great unselfish play by Holloman, and the Bulldogs' lead is 8 at 16 to 8. We approach the two-minute mark here in the second quarter. Backdoor cut by Harrelson, his shot no good. Edwards the rebound. Edwards trying to draw a foul from Maynard's no whistle, and he'll walk it across the timeline. Driscoll gets it off to Holloman. Carmine being patient here on the offensive end, under two minutes to go here in the second. Driscoll at the right elbow, trying to drive against Harrelson. Gets double teamed and somehow got the shot off, couldn't bank it in, and Tucker grabs the rebound for the Mules. Fairfield basketball, Bulldogs lead 16 to eight, 90 seconds left to play here in quarter number two. Dag with a right-handed drive, gets it off to Harrelson, him in the knees, but Harrelson able to get it to the left side to Tucker with 1.20 to play here in the second. We'll see how long Fairfield wants to hold it. Tucker, guarded by Stockton, picks up his dribble, now goes left side to Harrelson. Now in the far corner, it's Easton. Elevator screen, they get it to Mainers. Mainers, that one tipped and stolen by Edwards. Edwards into the front court, one-on-one -on -one with Dag. Edwards puts it up, left it short, but he was fouled by Mainers. And Mitchell will go to the free throw line for two. Another Bulldog takeaway. I'm in awe of this Bulldog's defensive performance so far. So two free throws coming up for Mitchell Edwards. They're brought to you by Expressway Ford. And the first one up and good. Mitchell this season shooting 73% at the charity stripe. That's his first point of the night. He goes two for two. 18 to eight, a 10 point Bulldog lead. 52 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Far corner, Harrelson, left side, it goes to Mainers. Mainers takes the pass left, comes near side to Dag. Dag lobs it down low, and Tucker, he got a shot blocked on the backboard by Driscoll. Now Edwards brings it into the front court. Edwards pulls up for three. Off the mark, rebound tipped and grabbed by Stockton. Now it's Driscoll driving inside, and he draws a foul. Great defensive play by Driscoll on one end and a great offensive on the other. A good job by Cade Stockton getting that offensive rebound and keeping the possession alive. So two free throws coming up for Landon Driscoll. I think Kevin Wolf would have probably liked to hold for one shot there. But two shots here for Driscoll. First one up and good. Driscoll with six. That's brought to you by Expressway Ford. Second free throw on the way. He goes two for two. Seven points for Driscoll. Carmi up by 12. 20 to eight with 23 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. The Mules will hold for one. Dag over on the right side. Picks it up near corner. It's off to Harrelson. Harrelson drives. Now it's Mainers. Mainers dribbling. Tosses it off to Easton with 10 seconds. At the Mule logo, Easton dribbles to his right, bumped into by Edwards. Now it's Tucker with three seconds. Tucker fades and can't bank it in. And that is how the third or the first half comes to an end. And what a first half it was for Carmi White County. They lead Fairfield 20 to eight. And a nice round of applause from the Bulldog faithful who made the 40 minute drive up here to the meal bar. We'll step aside for a three minute break. Come back with the Jordan at Funeral Group Halftime Show here on 97.3 WRUL. Big City Services in a small town. That's Butch and Associates CPAs, providing superior client service to folks here at home and across the U.S. Taxes and bookkeeping, accounting and audit services, plus full service consulting. 
Butch & Associates CPAs, where expertise meets excellence. At Butch & Associates, it's your journey backed by our commitment. Visit butch.com to learn more and contact us today. Welcome to Taylor Eye Care on Falcon Avenue in Carmi. Excellence in eye care. From thorough examinations utilizing advanced equipment and technology to premier optical products. Here at Taylor Eye Care, we treat every patient like family, going above and beyond the expected for a truly memorable eye care experience. Simply put, we are excellence in eye care. If you're looking to brighten and enhance your vision, don't hesitate to contact us today, 382-4683. Doing business in today's world can be complicated, time-consuming, and expensive. People's National Bank is here to help your business not only survive, but thrive. With modern-day products such as remote deposit capture, ACH payments, merchant card services, and commercial line of credit sweeps, we can get you paid faster, protect your risk, and make your money work hard for you. Hi, this is Melinda with People's National Bank. Give me a call today and get started. People's National Bank, member FDIC. Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics are growing to meet the needs of our communities. We're proud to continue to expand by offering acute, urgent care services by welcoming Dr. Brian Sloan to our McLeansboro Family Clinic location. With over 20 years of emergency medicine experience, Dr. Sloan provides acute, urgent care visits for those times when you can't wait to feel better. From colds and sore throats to care after sports-related injuries and more, Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics. Here for you now, like we've always been. To schedule an appointment, call 618-643. 2988. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years. Rush Appliance and Furniture stands the test of time. We have a large selection of in stock furniture and appliances for every room in your home, grills and smokers, and an unmatched dedication to superior service. This is Sean Rush inviting you to visit me in Fairfield or my dad, Terry, in Carmi, where we can help you furnish every room in your house with superb service after the sale. Whether you're a competitive athlete or want to enjoy a stroll around your neighborhood, orthopedic health is critical to your quality of life. The orthopedic and sports medicine team at Wabash General Hospital treats injuries and disorders of the bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and spine so you can return to moving through life with greater comfort and ease. To schedule an appointment, call 618-263-6400. Wabash General Hospital, people you know, helping people you love. Halftime score, Bulldogs lead Fairfield 20-8. Cole Carter, alongside Travis Black, Joby Wagner back at the WRUL studio. Landon Elliott and Chloe Beach with us for those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. You are listening to Bulldog Basketball on 97.3 WRUL. Carmi, Illinois, and also online worldwide at WRUL.com. The halftime show is brought to you by the Jordan Funeral Group. Remembering lives well lived and honoring that's just your Bulldog Sports. Visit Jordan at FuneralGroup.com for more. Well, really, that first half was all defense for the Bulldogs. I mean, that was one of the best defensive halves we've seen Carmi play all season. Uh, just guys said they can keep it up all night. Yeah, they, I think it is their best defensive half, and they've played some good halves of basketball on the defensive side. But the way they were up and guarding Fairfield, forcing them out on the perimeter, guarding for a minute, a minute and a half at a time, forcing turnovers, boxing out, getting defensive stops, getting out and running on in transition. It was overall their best half I've seen this far. Individuals scoring for Fairfield, they were led by Lane Tucker who had four points and then two apiece from Crescent White and Jalen Mainers. For the Bulldogs, seven points apiece for Landon Driscoll and Gavin Holloman, four for Kate Stockton, and two for Mitchell Edwards. Travis, you got team stats from that first half? Carmi shot six of 11 from two for 55%, only one of three for 33% from three, and five of eight for 63% from the line. Fairfield shot three of 13 from two for 23%, 0 of seven from three, and two of two for 100% from the line. Carmi had three offensive, 12 defensive rebounds, and three turnovers. And Fairfield had two offensive, four defensive rebounds with just two turnovers. You know what's interesting, looking at Carmi offensively shooting 50%, seven for 14. 
and they've taken good shots, Travis. I think, you know, Carmi, their problem over the last couple of weeks has been, you know, shooting, settling for threes too much, especially back on Tuesday up in Lawrenceville. But being able to go towards the basket, that's how they beat Hamilton County. That's how they beat Flora. Going towards the rim uh, and getting shots at the basket, getting fouled at the basket, and that's what's worked tonight. Yeah, so shot selection has been their kryptonite in the last couple of weeks, but once they can hit those long range threes, we've seen them early in the year when, they, when they're on their hot streaks, but right now they're cold, so get things going to the basket, good things happen. I mean, Gavin's done a good job at those little drop off passes to Cade, and Mitchell's done a good job at attacking the basket, drawing foul, so has Landon. And if Carmine continues to do that, that's what's going to open up that outside shot for him. Getting your halftime score, Bulldogs lead Fairfield 20 to 8. We'll step aside for a three minute break, come back with the third quarter here on 97.3 WRUL. Before you drive a nail, drive to Carmi Lumber. From cabinets and flooring, doors and paint, lumber and hardware, to shingles and siding. Knowledgeable and friendly staff that have your back on all those home projects and even deliver to your door. So before you drive a nail, drive to Carmi Lumber for the woods, the goods, and the know-how. Visit Carmi Lumber, North 3rd Street in Carmi and CarmiLumber.net. Hello Bulldog fans, this is Kyle Hosick with Country Financial. It's been great coming back to my hometown of Carmi, supporting our Bulldogs as well as my current and future clients. Whether you're looking for auto or home insurance, insurance for your business, life insurance or a retirement plan, I can help. I take pride in quality customer service and promise to listen to what's important to you while ensuring you have the right coverages. Stop by my office to see what sets us apart. Country Financial Representative Kyle Hosick, 603 West Main in Carmi. Welcome to Pro Rehab Carmi, where our passion is getting you back to life faster. It is our privilege to walk with you every step of the way using evidence-based treatments specifically created just for you. Whether it's sports, general orthopedics, or pelvic floor rehab, you are in the right hands. Your results are worth fighting for, and our team fights for you. Call 384-7872 or visit Pro Rehab on Main in Carmi and get back to life faster. Hey Bulldog fans, step into a legacy of trust and quality at Rice Motor Company. Hi, I'm Matt Rice, and here at Rice's we have proudly served Carmi and Southern Illinois for over 90 years. Every mile is a memory, so come join the Rice Motors family today and ensure you find the perfect car for your journey. Rice Motor Company, your hometown dealership, driving satisfaction since 1931. Go Bulldogs and give Rice a try before you buy. You'll be glad you did. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply, we proudly sell Skag and Spartan mowers. We fully understand the key to repeat and referral business is a strong parts and service department. This is also crucial to help keep your machine in top condition. Our multi-point winter service program is currently in full swing with one of the most competitive prices in the area. We have certified technicians on staff and we use brand specific products to keep that warranty fully intact. Pickup and delivery are available. Call 618-380-2133 or stop by 610 East Main today. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply in Carmi, Illinois. We are seriously overstocked at Expressway Ford. Choose from our huge selection of new and pre-owned Fords. Like this one owner 2020 Ford Escape SE all-wheel drive, only $17,990. Or this 2021 Ford Explorer XLT, only $25,990. Or loaded 2020 Ford Edge SEL all-wheel drive, reduced to $29,90. See our huge inventory at expresswayfordonline.com. Everything is priced to sell during our SOS sale. Expressway Ford, more Fords for less. Start of the third quarter as the Bulldogs lead at Fairfield 20 to eight at the break here in the Black Diamond Conference East Championship game. Winner wins the BDC East outright. They switch sides, Bulldogs going left to right here in the first half. And that pass intended for Dixon, loose in the backcourt. Nice hustle by Trey to go get it. Gets it off to Edwards. Now Carmi's got numbers. Up ahead to Holloman, who puts one up high off the glass. No good. And Snyder comes down for the rebound for, Fair, for Fairfield. Almost a bad way to start the, start the half right there. And great hustle by Trey staying after it. Harrelson. 
Got a step on Driscoll, puts one up and draws a foul. A couple of free throws coming up for Landon Harrelson, who did not score in that first half. And he's been Fairfield's top scorer this season, him and Tucker. First free throw on the way for Harrelson. Off the mark. Harrelson, one of many three-sport athletes here in Fairfield. Wide receiver in the fall and pretty good hitter in the spring as well. He had a home run against Carmine last year that hasn't landed yet. 20 to nine, Bulldogs in front as Harrelson goes one for two at the free throw line. Holloman over here on the near side. Gets it off to Driscoll. Bounce pass left side to Dixon. Gets it off to Gavin Holloman dribbling over to his right. Near corner, it's Edwards. Edwards, pick and roll with Holloman. Gavin catches it, now it's back to Edwards. Edwards, back in the near corner to Holloman. Gets past Snyder, shot up, off the mark. Rebounded by Tucker. Into the front court, comes Lane Tucker right to the basket, and they call a foul. We're gonna get Driscoll, oh, they call on Edwards. So Mitchell picks up his first foul, second foul on the Bulldogs here in the first minute and nine seconds of this third quarter. And so two shots coming up for Lane Tucker. And first one short. Free throws have not been ideally great for either side. And Tucker able to go one for two. Tucker's got five. Mules will apply full court pressure. Carmichael will clear out as Holloman brings it into the front court. Holloman wanted to hand it off to Edwards. Now he does. Edwards wanted to go back to Holloman, then he does. Gavin dribbling left in the hands of Edwards. Nearly fell down, able to keep his balance. Now he picks up his dribble and goes left side to Dixon. Trey dribbling to his right, gets it off to Driscoll, trying to attack. Driscoll. Working on Harrelson, pulls it out. Again, Carmi haven't been rushing shots, haven't been forcing shots, as Driscoll does just that, but he draws a foul. But the aggressiveness towards the rim, they, they've seen seams, and they've got to the basket. Yeah, they're willing to attack. So Driscoll will shoot a pair. He's got seven points on the night. And his first free throw up and good. Lando shooting at 78% from the charity stripe this season. And he goes two for two. 22-10. Bulldogs with the lead. 6-12 left to play here in the third. Tucker over on the near top. Calling for Harrelson. He goes back and he gets it off to Dak. Dang at the volleyball line, dribbling over to his right side, guarded by Holloman. Bounce pass on the far top to Harrelson. Harrelson will pull up for three, got it. It's Fairfield's first three-point make of the night. You know, one thing, Travis, you know, Carmi, they were up by 12 there, now it's down to a nine-point game, but with what's happened the first two times of these two teams, no lead's gonna feel safe tonight. As Edwards gets inside and he draws a foul. That will be against Snyder and that's his fourth. So that will send Mitchell Edwards to the free throw line. I thought Snyder had, he, he had I thought he had they three had him fouls. For, or, I don't know. I, think, I thought they had him for three as well. I thought he had three fouls there in that first half, unless they called one back. Yeah, maybe. Here's the first free throw for Edwards is up and good. So they only have it as He's Snyder's second. second foul. So they had to call two back. I don't know. I'm just the announcer. This is when the sideline reporter's got to go down there yep. and find things out. Edwards able to go two for two. He's got four, and the Bulldog lead is at 11, 24-13, five and a half to play here in the third quarter. Dag bounce pass over on the right side. That's Tucker with it now in the hands of Easton. In the far corner off to Harrelson. Between the circles to Tucker. Tucker looks over the defense and dribbles off to his right. Edwards waiting on him there. Tucker now in the hands of Harrelson, who Edwards switched back on to. 
Snyder here on the near side to Easton. Baseline drive, layup, missed it, got his own rebound. Missed it again, and a rebound by Kate Stockton. Whew. Ain't gonna get away with too many more of those. Driscoll with the basketball over on the right top, 24-13, Carmi with 4.45 to play here in the third quarter. Dixon left top, over on the near side at Stockton. Bounce pass down low, and Driscoll able to get to avoid the turnover pull-up. Mid-range jumper won't go, and they're going to get Mitchell Edwards for an over-the-back call as Schneider was boxing him out, getting the rebound. Mitchell's second foul. Haven't seen Kevin Wolf gone to the bench yet tonight. Mitchell's got two, Dixon's got two. But the Bulldogs have an 11 point lead. Harrelson over on the right side, driving in in the near corner. It's off to Tucker. Tucker to the rim against Edwards. Missed the layup, but he's fouled. And that's three on Mitchell. And the Carmi fans looked like he was straight up. Looks Wolf's got to make a decision now. Do you stick with him or? You know, I, I think with four and a half to play in the third as the first free throw for Tucker is up and good. You can ride with three, but the only problem is as soon as he gets four, he's got to come out. Yeah, he's got to come out and come out probably to the five-minute mark of the fourth. He'll stay in there as Tucker goes one of two and Stockton with another rebound. And we're going to get a timeout called by Carmi White County with 4.19 to play here in the third quarter. Bulldogs lead by 10, 24-14. This timeout's brought to you by Rush Appliance. Back in 30 seconds. You don't live to bank. You bank to live. And that's why so many of our customers rely on First Mid for much more than banking alone. Beyond everyday financial services, we're a valued partner and advisor with the help and resources for the things you need and whatever you aspire to achieve. So whether you're buying groceries or budgeting your dream kitchen, protecting your life's work, or laying the foundation for life after work, we're your bank for everything in the middle of anything. We're First Mid. First Mid Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Four nineteen left to play here in the third quarter. Bulldogs have the ball and a 10-point lead, 24-14. Gavin Holloman with the basketball over on the left top. Now dribbling over to his right, picks up his dribble to go in the post to Edwards. Mitchell turns, goes in, missed the layup, rebound tipped. Dag had it, saved it, and it's in the hands of White. The other way. Now it's Dag. Travis, you're a, was it, genie that predict the future? Yeah. You said during the break, Carmine was going to go to their 1-3-1. That's what they've done. As Tucker takes it right in at Trey Dixon, and they're going to call Trey for a foul. I thought Trey grabbed the basketball, and Kevin Wolf. Well, Kevin Wolf trying to clear that it wasn't a shot. He thought Tucker was going to pass it out. And so... We're going to have two more free throws here for Tucker. And so now you've got Dixon with three fouls as Tucker hits the first. Three forty-eight to play here in the third, 24-15. 24-16 as Tucker goes two of two. Mainers back in the game for the Mules as they... We'll apply some half-court pressure. Edwards will bring it into the front court. 3.38 to play here in the third, 24-16 Bulldogs. Carmi trying to hang on for their second consecutive BDC title. Edwards open for three at the top of the key. It's short. Holloman had the rebound momentarily, and it's taken away by White. A couple of big stops for the Mules defensively. Big possession here. Carmine in their 1-3-1. White in the far corner. Over on the far side, that one tipped by Holloman out of bounds. So we'll see how the Mules respond. This is one of those teams where 
You know, zones can be scary to run just because how well they can shoot the basketball. They go right inside to Maynard. Who was matched up against the undersized Stockton. And Maynard puts it in. And it's a six-point game, 24-18. Holloman dumps it off to Stock to Dixon. And Dixon lays it up and in. Scott McElroy be pleading for an offensive foul. That would have been Trey's fourth and a big answer. Big time play right there. 26-18, Edwards almost got the steal as Dan got it back. It's to White here in the near corner. Edwards almost stole it again. Now it's Harrelson near side to Dag. Long three on the way, he got it. Bulldogs the other way, here's Driscoll. He gets under the basket, 360, no foul. Rebounded by Tucker. Now Fairfield starting to get some minimum on their side. Yeah, the car might starting to play a little too fast for my liking. Tucker on the far side. He's looking at Dag here in the near corner. Almost pulled up for three. Now it's in the far corner off to White. His zone just scares me against a team like this. It's got shooters. Dag, can he go two for two? Yep. He wanted that basketball. He was calling for it in that corner. Deja vu. It's a two-point game, 26-24. Holloman hands it off to Driscoll. This game has turned in a hurry. Driscoll off in the far corner. Baseline drive by Dixon, lost the dribble, and he tries to swing it back out. Mainers travels, no whistle. Now we're going to get a foul at midcourt against Dixon. That's going to be his fourth. Sure did look like Mainers, or the foul was against Stockton. So the foul is going to be against Cade Stockton. And that's foul number five on the Bulldogs here in the third. Just the first foul on Stockton. And well, Merrick Milhorn did check in. but oh, It's two free throws. He's got to wait. Two free throws. Oh, man. First free throw for a white off the back of the rim. Merrick will check back in. 26-24, Carmi, 1.25 to go here in the third. Fairfield on a 10-2 run, 11-2 run. As White goes one of two. And the ball's got to take care of the ball. We still got a whole fourth quarter to play. Yeah, this feels like a fourth quarter right about now. 26-25, Carmi, 1.15 to play here in the third. Driscoll driving inside to the rim. Layup good for Landon Driscoll. Great aggressive take right there. The senior just clearing it out and going to the rack. Three-point Carmine lead, 28-25. One minute left to play here in the third. Harrelson over in the far corner. It's off to Tucker. Tucker over on the far top. Here's Dag trying to get inside. Back over to Tucker. Tucker dribbled again. Pull-up shot in the lane. Won't go. And... Stockton ticked it out towards midcourt, and Harrelson will just go to get it. We'll see if Fairfield wants to hold for one shot here. 35 seconds. White near top, over on the right side to Harrelson. Back to White. Carmine switched back to their man-to-man -man with Edwards on the bench with three fouls. They go in the post to Mainers. He gets triple team, forces one up. It's no good. Rebounded by Holloman with 20 seconds left. Holloman into the front court, lobs it up to Driscoll. Driscoll falls down, and Kevin Wolf's going to call a timeout. Heads up play by Coach Wolf. It is a timeout. Is it a 30 or a full? It is a 30 second timeout. We'll stay right here. We'll stay right here with 12.8 on the clock. Like I said, Travis, no lead is is too big for this Fairfield squad. I mean, this game just starts to feel like how the last two have been with these two teams. Yeah, deja vu. Once Carmike got in foul trouble, Edwards got three, and uh, Dixon got three. They went to that 1-3-1, one, one, and yeah, Justice Dagg started going crazy from the three-point line, and that's the risk you run going into that 1-3-1 one, one zone. It's really good against a team that can't stretch the floor, but this Fairfield team can shoot it with the best of them. So Edwards back in the ball game for the final 13 seconds here in the third quarter. Carmi has it with a three-point lead, 28-25. 
Driscoll slaps the basketball, and yeah, Mainers just tackled Edwards for a loss of 15. It'll be third down. Well, Mainers plays quarterback, so he doesn't really tackle that much. Yeah. Second. Quarterback and punter, ain't he? <laughs> Second foul on Mainers. But only the third Fairfield foul, so Carmi still has to inbound. Still 12 point on the clock. Driscoll slaps the basketball, lobs it up top to Holloman. 10 seconds. Carmi can really use a basket here to end the third. Driscoll with six seconds. Three seconds. Driscoll with two, and we're going to get a five second violation. Uh, they call, do they call five second or That's, call timeout? They said five second violation. He held up five. Huh. I've I've never seen that. I don't know if he was within arm's length, was he? Wow. So now Fairfield's got out with 1.3. Harrelson from half court. And we go to the fourth quarter. The Mules have battled back. It's a three-point game as we go to the fourth and final stanza. 28-25 Bulldogs. Back in one minute on 97.3 WRUL. What a hit. Now that's a playmaker. With Hucks Bucks Big Rewards, you can be a playmaker too. Hi folks, I'm Chris Myers. And I'm Cole Carter. Download the Hucks Bucks Big Rewards app now and save with great coupons on gas, snacks, and more. And make sure to fuel up at the Bulldog Spirit Pump at Hucks. A portion of your fill-up goes to support Carmi White County Unit 5 schools. And that makes you a playmaker in the community. Hucks Market, headquartered in Carmi. The alarm sounds, coffee brews, and the porch light guides your steps toward another busy day. Just like you, Invenergy Solar is up with the sun. Invenergy's Boomtown Solar Project will create up to 400 construction jobs and create enough electricity to power 40,000 American homes. Invenergy expects to invest $60 million over the project's lifetime, helping illuminate the future of all in White County. Private investment developed on private property with public benefits. Invenergy. Start of the fourth quarter as the Bulldogs lead at Fairfield at 28-25 here in the BDC East Championship game. Trent Bliss in the far corner, off to Easton, gets past Stockton, bounce pass to Bliss, forces one up and got it to go. It's a one-point game, 28-27. Mitchell Edwards left top, off to Dixon at the top of the key, now on the near side at Stockton. And we're going to get a foul away from the ball as somebody was grabbed trying to go towards the basket. That's going to be on Jay Snyder, and that is his third foul. And so we're going to see Latrell Snyder check in. Now Mitchell Latrell Snyder, he got hurt at the end of football season. Wasn't sure if he had played it all this season but he's checking in here with 723 to play in the fourth quarter and then another whistle as he's having a word with Trent Bliss and Mitchell Edwards it's a rivalry Bliss trying to face guard Edwards Driscoll, nice pass to Holloman, missed the layup, and the rebound in the hands of Cade Stockton. Edwards on the near side. Edwards picks up his dribble, gets it off into the hands of Driscoll. Driscoll trying to attack, gets bumped, and foul on the floor. Fairfield fans pleading for a travel. Even the band director up on the stage pleading for a travel. But the ball will stay with Carmine, a foul on the floor against Tucker. That's his third. Yeah, this game's going to get real chippy real quick. Edwards in the near corner off to Driscoll. Driscoll dribbling, gets it off to Holloman. Snyder gets up on him. Holloman dribbling, stumbling, foul against Snyder. That's his first. 
third Fairfield foul called in the first minute and three seconds of this fourth quarter. They've all been on this possession. Driscoll lobs it into Edwards. Edwards, pull up jumper on the way. Off the mark, Cade Stockton there, missed the open putback, and then a foul on the rebound against Carmi. That's Cade Stockton's second foul. And Cade was in the perfect position for a putback, couldn't finish. Yep. It was unfortunate. I mean, he rebound fell right in his lap, and when he put it up, it would just touch every part of the rim but go down. 6.45 to play here in the fourth. Dag picks up his dribble, and it's off to Harrelson between the circles. 28-27, Carmi. Dag stops, gets it in the far side to Easton. Easton looks, comes near side to Harrelson. Harrelson dribbling over on the far side to Bliss. Thought about the three. Edwards right there on him. Now it's back to Harrelson. 6.15 to play here in the ball game. 28-27, Carmile White County. Bliss at the top of the key. He goes near side to Dag. Dag. That pass picked by Driscoll. He goes to get it in the backcourt. Gets past Tucker. Then layup by Driscoll. And he's fouled by Tucker from behind. Good job by Landon Bate in that pass right there. Carmi had that one scouted out. That's the fourth foul on Lane Tucker. That's a big one. And you see the quickness from Landon Driscoll able to tip that pass. The awareness to let Tucker kind of go past him. And so two shots coming up for Landon Driscoll. And Scott McElravey is going to have to take out one of his seniors. Tucker, who's got four. He's the leading scorer for the Mules. First free throw for Driscoll up and good. Driscoll's got 12. Mainers checks in for the Mules, as does Crescent White. With 5.57 left to play. 29-27, Carmi White County with the lead. Second free throw for Driscoll. He goes two for two. Carmi needs to put together a couple of stops and a couple of baskets here. 5.48 to play. 30-27. Dag left top. Now in the near corner, it's off to White. Back to Dag. Dag dribbles, pulls up for three. Off the mark, rebounded by Edwards. 30-27, five and a half to play. Driscoll over on the near side to Edwards. Edwards tries to get past the freshman Mainers. Oh, Mainers grabbed him. And it's off to Driscoll who spins inside and he's going to be called for a travel. Now Landon went to a jump stop there in the lane and kind of slipped and fell down. It's the same spot. Mitchell just kind of slipped in right there, too. They might need to get a towel out there. Tucker back in the ball game, or I thought he was. Maybe he's hit to check in. No, oh, I'm seeing things. 30, 27, Carmi, 5, 10 to play. Dag drives on the right side, gets it off to Harrelson. Guarded there by Dixon. Harrelson gets it off to Easton here on the near top. He'll dribble to the midcourt logo. Five minutes to play, a three-point Bulldog lead. White here near corner. Switched on to by Driscoll. Mainers trying to post up. They go on the right side to Easton. Jab step, drive, near corner. They swing it around. White for the tie. Won't go. Rebound was bobbled by Edwards. Loose ball as they dive on the floor. They're going to get a foul on Driscoll. I hate those fouls. Those loose ball yeah, on the floor Yeah, everybody's foul. diving for the ball and, <clears throat> you know, the kid's hustling. Just the first foul on Driscoll, just the second foul on Carmi here in the fourth. But Fairfield will keep the possession. And Mitchell went up for the rebound, just never really got full possession of it. And then Travis, the, some of the Carmi fans saying what you were thinking, they got a towel to wipe that sweat mark up. And might be a spot down there you need to wipe up as well, but they're not going to. 4.43 left to play in the ball game. Bulldogs lead 30-27.
Harrelson walks it across the timeline. Over on the far side, it's Dag. Edwards went for the steal against White. Edwards got to be careful. He's playing with three fouls. Here, uh, Tucker at the top of the key. Tucker picks up his dribble, steps through, layup short, and a foul is going to be called on who? Cade Stockton? It's going to be on Landon Driscoll. Driscoll. I, I didn't see that one. I think Driscoll hit Cade Stockton in the face is what I thought happened. So Fairfield keeps it again. They go on the post to Tucker. Tucker draws a foul on Driscoll, and Driscoll's committed three fouls on this possession. Ah, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's, that is a... I think that's a really bad call right there. That is. He went straight up and he said he grabbed him on the arm, which he never lowered his hands from above his head. So I don't know how you can grab somebody on the arm that way. So three Carmine starters have three fouls. As Stucker hits the free throw. Edwards has three, Driscoll has three, and Dixon has three. Lane Tucker, though, playing with four. He'll have one more free throw. He goes two for two. Tucker with nine. That's a one-point game, 30-29. Fairfield going back to full court pressure. Driscoll has the basketball. Carmine will clear out. 4-10 left to play in the ball game. Winner wins the BDC East. Driscoll gets past Harrelson. Driscoll to the basket. Missed it. Offensive rebound. Stockton. Cade steps through and puts it in. Cade Stockton doing Cade Stockton things. Great job by Cade falling up the miss. Three-point Bulldog lead, 32-29 with 3.48 to play. Easton trying to get past Dixon. Lost it. Loose ball. Driscoll takes it away. Driscoll pushing the floor. Carmine's got to take care of the ball and get a good shot here. Three and a half to play. They lead 32-29. Edwards crossover to the rim. And a foul, an offensive foul is going to be called against Edwards as Mitchell took a hard fall. Foul's on number five. Mitchell Edwards is four to the They're going to call the offensive foul on Edwards and Mitchell is down. When you saw it coming, Snyder is in the post, looking to draw the charge. And that's what he did. As they take a look at Mitch Leverage, we'll step aside. We'll step aside for a 30-second break. Well, folks, that ain't country, but this is Skylar Harrelson from Jansen Auto and Carmi. It's been my pleasure to help my friends and neighbors get into the cars or trucks of their dreams for the last couple of years. Here at Jansen Auto, we're bringing you great vehicles at better than expected prices. There's really no reason to shop anywhere else. If we don't have it, we'll get it. All new vehicles are priced at huge discounts. Your hometown dealer, Jansen Auto Group in Carmi. Stop by and see why. So 32-29, an offensive foul called on Mitchell Edwards as good news. I think he just got the wind knocked out. He walked back to the bench, and he walks right over to the scores table. Bad news, it's his fourth foul, and Fairfield's got the ball. Tucker at the top of the key, hands it off to Dag. Shot fake, Dag. Dag dribbling off to his left. Holloman all over him, gets it off to Easton now on the near side. Easton between the circles. Dribbling over to his right, guarded by Milhorn. Easton goes back to his left, top of the circle, it's Tucker. Down to the post, they go to Mainers. Mainers stops, puts it up, missed it. Reached over the back of Stockton, no whistle. And now they call a foul on Mainers. Number 30. 
It's getting real chippy in here. What's the over-under on fans getting kicked out, Travis? Well, we've seen one so far. <laughs> uh, maybe two, three. So that foul is foul number five on the mules, and they're trying to decide who was the over the back, actually, or the shove in the back. And it should be Kate Stockton, I would say. Foul goes against Maners. That's his third, and so Kate Stockton will go to the free throw line. Well, this game has definitely turned chippy. Mitchell Edwards did check back into the ball game, which is good to see. But a lot of fouls, no fouls being called. It has rose the tension on both sidelines. First free throw for Stockton off the mark. Timeout time Fairfield. Fairfield. It's brought to you by Rush Appliance. If it's time to rethink your furniture and appliances, time to think Rush Appliance in Carmine and Fairfield. Back in one minute. The Carmi Kiwanis Club is working hard to make a difference in the community, and it all starts with serving the children of the world. From fundraising efforts with proceeds going directly back into the community to working hand-in-hand -hand with the Key Club, schools, Arrows program, and much more. At the Carmi Kiwanis Club, we build, and we love to welcome you. We meet every Thursday at noon in the Y County Farm Bureau basement. Come visit us for lunch, a great program, and learn more about how Carmi Kiwanis helps move our region forward. Hey, Bulldog fans, it's Amanda Nelson with First Bank. We're excited to be your three for three sponsor again this season. For every three point shot made out of varsity boys and girls basketball game, we'll donate $3 to Carmi White County School. And be sure to stop by and get your First Bank Bulldogs debit card. Every time you swipe it, we'll also make a donation to the school. Since 1893, First Bank has been committed to making great things happen for Carmi businesses, farmers, and families. Let's go, Bulldogs. Where great things happen, First Bank is there. Housing Lender, member FDIC. Second free throw by Kate Stockton is up and good. Kate's got seven points. The Bulldog lead is four with 2.43 to play. Easton dribbling off to his right, gets it off to Dag. Now it's Tucker back in the hands of Dag, driving to the basket, goes up against Edwards and one. It's five. Mitchell Edwards just fouled out. And that's one of those fouls you can't really do much with. Yep. It kind of jumped into your body. It's just a, that's one of those tough plays. Well, Mitchell's only scored four points, but I think it's been one of his better defensive rebounding performances. I mean, he's been all over the place for the Bulldogs tonight. So they got to find a way in the final two minutes and 34 seconds to win this game with Edwards on the bench. Free throw for Dag. Missed it. Rebounded by Driscoll. Wow. <laughs> One hand. Spider-Man rebound there from Landon Driscoll. And he brings it into the front court. Big possession here for Carmi with 2.25 to play. 33-31. Stockton left side off to Trey Dixon. Millhorn on the near top to Holloman. Holloman drives to the basket, goes up against Mainers and draws a foul. Two free throws coming up for Calvin Holloman. Well, of course, with Mitchell Edwards out of the ball game, Travis, you've got to look to your two guards, Holloman and Driscoll, for the rest of the way. Yeah, the ball's got to be in their hands, and they got to be making the decisions. they got to make their free throws, too, as Holloman misses the first. That foul on Mainers, that's his fourth. Second free throw, he got the second one. Eight points for Holloman. 34-31, two minutes left to play. Tucker driving on the right side, steps through, fade, shot good. Tough shot. He's so tough to stop when he gets in the lane. And a timeout taken by Kevin Wolf. It's a full timeout. And it's brought to you by Rush Appliance. We'll take one as well back in one minute. Evil Life.
Creative Studio in Carmi is a full-service communications and design consultancy. Located in the heart of Southern Illinois, we have a strong focus on small businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations. From t-shirts to business cards to large format banners, we are excited to make your design project a reality. We also specialize in video and audio production. Reach out to us to see how we can create something amazing together all within your budget. Evil Eye Creative Studio, what can we create with you? Your partner in auto repair. That's Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. You get service, expertise, and I promise you'll drive away satisfied. Complete engine and body repair, 24-hour day wrecker and towing service, tires from sales and service, and repair including muffler service, brakes, shocks, suspension, and more. When quality counts, count on Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. Your partner in auto repair. Call 382-7165 today. One fifty-five left to play in the ball game. It's a one-point game, 34-33. Bulldogs have the lead in the ball. Driscoll brings it across the timeline. Crossover, Driscoll getting inside, now pulls it back out. Over on the far sideline. One thirty-seven to go. Driscoll dribbles off to his right. In the near side, it goes to Gavin Holloman. Bulldogs playing without Mitchell Edwards, who fouled out earlier in this quarter. Holloman being drenched by Snyder, gets it off to Driscoll. I mean, I understand wanting to kill some clock, but you don't want to run this down and then get nothing. Driscoll to the rim, reverse layup, good by Driscoll. Great move right there, isolated the left side of the floor and finished on the right. Three point Bulldog lead, 36-33, one minute left to play. And timeout. Called by Scott McElravey. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here. 58 seconds to play. Oof. Huge basket by Driscoll. Yeah, that, that sets it up for it's still a three-point game. And Way Fairfield's been shooting the ball in this fourth quarter. They missed both threes they've attempted. So the Carmichael's put themselves in good position. They just got to get a stop here yep. now. If you get a stop right here, you're going to have your a good chance. Get a stop, take care of the ball, and make your free throws. Again, Carmi playing without Mitchell Edwards, fouled out earlier in this fourth quarter. Carmi has led almost the entirety of this ball game, led by as many as 12 at one point. This game is pretty much felt the exact same way that both these two teams have played in both of their previous matchups this season. But this one, of course, for all the marbles. Carmi trying to win their second consecutive BDC East title. Tucker on the right side. They get it up, they wanted to go to Dag. Now Tucker picked it up near side, Easton for three. Missed it, rebound tipped into the hands of White. White gets it out near side to Harrelson. A big offensive rebound by Crescent White. And the Mules have it down by three. Tucker picks up his dribble. Gets it near side to Easton and a timeout taken by Fairfield. Timeout, Scott McElrady. It's brought to you by Rush Appliance. We'll take one as well back in 30 seconds. Citizens National Bank of Albion has always been in the business of making dreams come true. Are you like many in the community that have dreamed of owning your own business? Bring your ideas in and speak to one of our commercial loan professionals in Albion, Alney, Crossville, and Bridgeport. Our competitive rates and solid decision making will make it the best decision you ever made. Let us help you get started and we'll watch your business grow. Citizens National Bank of Albion, no better banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Thirty-two seconds left to play in the ball game. Fairfield's got the ball. Carmi's got a three-point lead. At Thirty-six, thirty-three. The Mules just got an offensive rebound after a missed three by Jake Easton. You've got to get a stop here for Carmi. Yeah. You can't allow them to score, and then you're going to have to take care of the basketball up the court. If you get a stop here, you just get fouled and go to the free throw lines, make them, and this game's over. What a game this has been, as we expected. Low scoring defensive ball game. 
Crescent White over on the far top. Bounce pass down low. They go to Tucker with 25 seconds. Tucker looks. Get it off to Harrelson. Harrelson dribbles. Now it's back into the hands of Tucker. Guarded by Dixon. Tucker spins. Puts up a shot. Left it short. Rebound tipped up into the air. Out of bounds. Oh, they say last touch by Fairfield. I thought Dixon touched it last. And the ball goes over to Carmi. Yeah, that's a lucky break. I think Dixon did touch that ball last. So now if you're Carmi, you've got to take care of the basketball. Fairfield's going to foul right away. Brendan Boyd checks in for the Mules. Because he got Tucker with four fouls. You don't want to have him foul out. Dixon will inbound. 11.9 to play. Dixon looks. Gets it into Holloman. Holloman. Just hang on to it, and he's fouled. And no point to even try to dribble there. They have to foul you. And if he makes one, that's big. Just need one. Mm -hmm. Gavin had a really rough start to the season at the free throw line. He has done much better as the season has gone on. As Travis knocks on our wooden table, shooting about 60%. First of two for Gavin Holloman. Got it! That's big right there. Dag and Tucker will check back in. According to the scoreboard, Fairfield's got one timeout left. Carmine's got two timeouts left. Bulldogs clear the lane. Second free throw for Holloman. Got them both. Two big shots by the junior. Harrelson pulls up for three at the volleyball line. It's no good. It hits the top of the backboard. It's going to be out of bounds, and Carmi's going to take over with five seconds left and a five-point lead, 38-33. You just got to inbound the ball. They catch it cleanly. They can just wait in the backcourt. Dixon looking, and we're going to get a timeout. All right, Kevin Wolf, can't ever be too timeout. sure. Carmine. Heck, if I'm Trey, just launch that one down towards Cade Stockton. Five seconds left. Timeout taken by Kevin Wolf. We'll stay right here. Man, what a ball game. Yeah, this has been a heck of a ball game. Went from a 12, 14 point lead there in the first half to five point all the way down to one. And with the way things were turning, you know, it felt so much like those first two meetings. Bulldogs having a double digit lead. Fairfield came all the way back, got within one, but never reclaimed the lead. And like you said, Travis, if Carmike can just inbound the basketball, they're going to be conference champs for the second straight season. Yeah. So all you got to do is just get it in somehow, some way, and don't foul. Honestly, what I would do is I would catch it and just chuck it towards the other end. Because even if it rolls out of bounds with time on the clock, they'd have to inbound it from over there. So we're going to run the five across. Spread formation. Yeah. Dixon will inbound. Five seconds left. Bulldogs lead 38-33. Dixon to inbound. Looks. Gets it into Driscoll. And Driscoll's fouled with 3.8. Make or miss. It's a two-possession game. And Carmi has looks like they're going to pull off one of, if not the biggest win of the season. Two free throws for Landon Driscoll. Missed the first. For Carmi, you don't foul. You just sit back at half court. Let them dribble this one out. Driscoll. He goes one of two. Driscoll's got 16, 39, 33. Tucker will fire a corner three. It will count. It doesn't matter. The Bulldogs come into the mule barn and spoil senior night. And Carmi White County is your Black Diamond Conference East champion. What a whale of a ball game. Nip and tuck back and forth. 
double-digit lead, cut to a single-digit, cut to a one-point lead. Ended up winning by three. A lot of chippiness there in the third and fourth quarter. What a ball game. Carmi White County wins it 39 to 36 to claim their second consecutive Black Diamond Conference East champion. What a ball game. And the Bulldogs hang on for win number 23 on the season. We'll step aside for a three minute break. We'll come back with the Roark Transport Post Game Show here on 97.3 WRUL. I'm Nancy J. Winter CPA. We believe in family values, even in the world of finance, because every financial decision impacts your family. For all the milestones in your life, our team is here to maximize your savings, minimize your taxes, and help you plan for a prosperous future. Visit Nancy J. Winter CPA in Carmi for tax planning, saving for college, retirement planning, and the expertise to help get you where you want to be. Learn more at nancyjwinnerscpa.com or call 382-2364. Nancy J. Winter CPA, where you are treated like family. Great teamwork is no accident. David and the gang at Hale Body Shop salute the area athletes. Just as in sports, the team at Hale Body Shop work together to make sure you get your car back as quickly as possible. When it comes to collision repair, more and more people choose the team way out there on Possum Road. Hale Body Shop in Carmine. David and the gang are proud supporters of area athletes. Roark Trucking and Roark Transport in Carmi. Driving the distance, delivering the difference. Commercial or residential. In Hydras, propane and fuel. Rock, dirt and lime. Parking lots, driveways and washouts. Farmers depend on Roark Trucking and Roark Transport to deliver their lime when and where they need it. Remember Roark Trucking and Roark Transport for your next job or your next haul. Fast and dependable. Call Roark Transport and Roark Trucking. 618-265-3665. In 1925, when Farrell Hospital opened, they knew that families in El Dorado and the surrounding communities needed a hospital they could depend on, close to home. Over the years, Farrell grew to meet the needs of patients. Today, Farrell Hospital has grown to offer advanced emergency care, orthopedics, cancer, surgery, imaging, lab, and more, always keeping more care right here close to home. Farrell Hospital. You can depend on us. You can buy more of what you want when you save on what you need. Save on meal ingredients by shopping Little Giant Grocery Outlet in Carmi. Little Giant's team of buyers are constantly scanning wholesalers, looking for pantry favorites and meal ingredients at astonishing savings just so you can shop confidently, knowing that you can come in anytime and find great deals from fresh cuts of meat and grocery items to deli, fresh produce and frozen goods. See just how much more your dollar buys at Little Giant Grocery, Carmi, Illinois. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply, we proudly sell Skag and Spartan mowers. We fully understand the key to repeat and referral business is a strong parts and service department. This is also crucial to help keep your machine in top condition. Our multi-point winter service program is currently in full swing with one of the most competitive prices in the area. We have certified technicians on staff and we use brand specific products to keep that warranty fully intact. Pickup and delivery are available. Call 618-380-2133 or stop by 610 East Main today. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply in Carmi, Illinois. Final score, the Bulldogs defeat Fairfield 39 to 36 to win the Black Diamond Conference East for the second consecutive year, and it took all 32 minutes. The postgame show is brought to you by Roark Transport, hauling fuel, rock, grain, and more to help our community grow. Call 265-3665 for more. What a ball game, Travis. You know, I thought there, it felt, again, so much like those first two matchups. Carmi getting a big lead. Fairfield coming all the way back. They hit those big threes in the third quarter. Just and Carmi was able to hang on. They played good defense. They rebounded and made their free throws late. Yeah, Carmi did a great job in the first half of locking in on the defensive end, really getting a bunch of stops, forcing Fairfield in some bad shots. Didn't foul. Only had one foul in that first half, and then that third quarter came around. Fairfield came out, you know, with a renewed uh, energy, renewed vigor. And they just started pressing like if there was no tomorrow. Carmi started getting in foul trouble, and I thought, oh, here we go. They started sh shaving that lead off from 12, or from, was it 14 at one point, 14 to like 8 to 9, then stayed at 9 for a little bit, got all the way cut down to 1. And Mitchell Edwards had three fouls, Trey Dixon had three. 
and it looked like, oh, no, here we go again. And then Carmite was able to ready, ready the ship, balance everything out, and take care of the basketball and get some good shots going to the basket. Travis will pass his headset over to head coach Kevin Wolf after the Bulldogs defeat Fairfield 39-36. to Well, Coach, your, your blood pressure, are, are you all right? Are you, are you okay tonight? I'm good. <laughs> hey, Holy cow. What a ball game. I mean, we yeah. said that it felt so much – like the first time, first two times you guys oh. played, you get the big lead. I thought we thought it was your best first half you played all yeah. season, especially defensively. But how about you know the moxie from you guys late to hang on, especially hit the free throws late. Yeah, <clears throat> well, you know we talked, um, you know in our practice on Thursday leading up, and we talked about our practice today. You guard, you win. You know if we guard their stuff and rebound, you win the basketball game. That's exactly what we did in the first half. Now. You know, from a coaching perspective, it's a little easier to play defense in the first half because your guys are right in front of you, so they can hear you. Whenever we're calling out stuff, what they're trying to do, they can hear us. But on the flip side, they can, I mean, they do a good job coaching too, so they knew a lot of the stuff we were doing. This was just a game where, you know, who was going to make the plays down the stretch. And the first two times we played them, they made some big plays. Harrelson with the three, Snyder going to the bucket. Uh, tonight we were able to do that. Lando getting underneath the bucket and making that basket. Um, Gavin with his free throws. Just just three great games we've had with them. Um, you know, I hated losing the first two, but, but I told them after we lost the first game, um, the conference game, not the CIT, but if we take care of business, we'll have a chance up here to win the conference and just keep grinding and keep fighting every day because this is what we were looking for right here, and, and we did it. Another one of those nights where the three-point shots just aren't falling. Or aren't falling. Yeah. You guys are a three-point shooting team, but I thought you guys did a great job, again, going towards the basket, yeah. drawing fouls if the shots weren't there. Yeah, Holloman, I think, in the first half did a great job of that. Landon as well. Uh, Mitchell was getting in there. They were hacking us all night, uh, maybe both ways, you know, but it was just, you know, what I say all the time, you know, what what a great atmosphere we had tonight. Um, you know, two teams that have been playing for 100 years. I mean, this is just, just fantastic. It's small-town basketball. Uh, both teams um, respect each other. Um, just, just fantastic. I'm so happy happy for our players. You know, they're the ones that did it. You know, us coaches, you know, we're over there. We try to put them in positions to succeed, um, but they're the ones that have to make the plays, and, boy, they made them tonight. I thought Mitchell, he only scored four points. I thought it was one of his best defensive games yeah. as far as defending and rebounding. I mean, he was all over the Without place doubt, getting I mean, all those rebounds and did a great job uh, of kind of holding the ground down low yeah, defensively. Yeah, he's, he's playing some of his best basketball. And you think, you know, you oh, he meant, I mean, he scored 28 points and had seven threes. But, no, he's, he's becoming a complete player. His defense has gotten better. He's communicating on defense, um, just, just really playing. And he's – Every team, whenever they're scouting us, you got to take away Edwards. This is what you have to do. I mean, that's what every team's focal point is. And I always tell them that's a compliment to him. That's the type of player that he is. Uh, but he can affect the game so many other ways, and that's why we're playing good when he does that um, because he's, he's just a load inside, um, around the rim, altering shots. He's starting to block some. Uh, but, yeah, his shots will start falling. We saw it the other day. Um, but that was, it was just so fun. I mean, to be able to come up here you know, and do it on their floor, um, something pretty special. I always say Cade Stockton doing Cade Stockton yeah. things. I mean, the offensive rebounds, the putbacks. He missed a couple of them, which I'm sure he's yeah. proud of himself about. But, again, defensively, the things that he was able to do to disrupt their defense and, and close those possessions as well by getting big rebounds. Yeah, he plays with so much tenacity and effort. And that, those are the type of guys you have to have um, to, to be a good basketball team. He doesn't care one bit about how much he scores, any of that. He cares about winning. Um, and that's a special kid. You guys get you guys get a trophy, and, and yeah. this is a hard one to win. I mean, back to back years getting the conference championship, yeah. not an easy thing to do. Coach. I think it's the first time since 1962-63 that that a Carmine team's won back to back titles. That's like 60 years. Remember, I asked you about that. Did you do your math? Is that 60 some years? <laughs> um, so that's special. I think with today we were looking up at the board. Only three teams have won a conference, or not three. Uh, Twelve teams have won a conference championship, and the hundred is the 113th year of Carmine basketball. So um, they're the 13th team to do it, um, and it was all them. Man, they they played their butts off tonight. Well, the regular season somehow it, it comes to an end. You guys begin regionals on Monday. You're going to be in the Massac County Regional, but yeah. you host El Dorado uh, on Monday. I know they've had a, a, a down year, but kind of looking ahead to next week, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, we just got to take care of business. I mean, now it's, it's zero and zero. I mean, you lose, you go home. Uh, you just got to keep stacking play after play, defensive trip as defensive trips after defensive trips, garden. Um, that's what will win you in, in this time of the year. You know, we it's been a long time since we've won a regional, but I've been around long enough and I watch enough. If you if you lock people down and clamp them down and take them out of their stuff, you're going to be in a ball game late. That's just what we have to keep doing. Um, that's what we, we've been doing, um, and we're going to hopefully continue to do that. So we got El Dorado at home. We've played them twice. They've got nothing to lose. They have no seniors on their team. They're all young kids. They're going to step in that gym wanting to upset us, and they're going to probably fire up a bunch of threes. And if they start going in, we're, we could be in trouble. So it's just now, it's not, you're not looking at your opponent. You're just you're just wanting to play good, solid basketball. And then, then we'll get into that semifinal um, if we win. And then, then who knows? Anything can happen. Well, Coach, congrats on the conference championship. Congrats on a thrilling win. We'll talk to you next yeah, week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all you do. That's Kevin Wolf as the Bulldogs win a thriller tonight, 39-36 to over Fairfield to win their second consecutive 
Black Diamond Conference East Championship. Looking at the individual stat line, first for the Fairfield Mules, they had 14 points from Lane Tucker, eight from Justice Stagg, five from Lennon Harrelson, four from Jalen Mayners, three from Crescent White, and two from Trent Bliss. Four Carmi, 16 points from Lennon Driscoll, 10 from Gavin Holloman, four, or correction, seven from Kate Stockton, four from Mitchell Edwards, and two from Trey Dixon. Travis, you got team stats? Karma shot 10 of 23 for 43% from two, one of five for only 20% from three, and 16 of 22 for 73% from the charity stripe. Fairfield shot seven of 24 for 29%, four of 15 for 27% from three, and 10 of 15 for 67% from the line. Karma had six offensive, 18 defensive rebounds, and seven turnovers, and Fairfield had seven offensive, 11 defensive rebounds with just four turnovers. The play of the game is brought to you by First Mid Bank and Trust, the department you can bank on, kind of the great folks at First Mid Bank and Trust in Carmi. you got to say Landon Driscoll. I mean, he hit some big shots in the first half to help them get that lead. And I think that layup there at the end to make it a three-point game and the great defense he played tonight. He had a couple of tip passes, led to turnovers. Uh, the senior wanted to win that conference championship in his senior year. Yeah, you could tell he, was, he had some extra motivation tonight. He was out there playing his tail off on both ends of the court. And he did a good job there towards the end, really taking care of the basketball and making plays when they need to be made. And some of those tough finishes inside, I still don't know how he got the ball up near the rim. In your final score, Bulldogs win it 39-36. to The regular season comes to an end. Carmi finishes the regular season 23-7 and and 9-1 and in the Black Diamond Conference. They begin regional play on Monday at home against El Dorado. Uh, then hopefully it's on to the Massac County semifinals against Vienna. And like Coach says, who knows? I mean, Travis, records go out the window now. Yeah, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Everyone's 0-0. Zero, zero. And, and Carmi, if they play defense like they did tonight, they could be anybody. Yeah, if they if they come out and guard like that first half there, and even in the second half, they had to back off a little bit because of foul trouble. But if they play defense like they did tonight, they will put themselves in a great opportunity to beat anybody down there in the Massac County Regional. So our week-long trip here at the Mule Barn, I feel like we've been here every night this week, our third trip up here, uh, comes to an end. And, and we'll be back at home in the friendly confines of McDougal Evers on Monday in the first round of regionals. Big thanks to Joby Wagner back at the WRUL studio. Flannan Elliott and Chloe Veach with us, those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. For Travis Flack, I'm Cole Carter. Thanks for watching and listening to Bulldog Basketball. <laughs>